Well, bear with me one second. Okay, so first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Home and Textiles today uh, for helping us put on today's webinar. I think I'm just going to go ahead and introduce a man who needs absolutely no introduction, my very dear friend Warren Schuldberg, who is the Editorial Director at Home and Textiles today. Warren, thank you on behalf of everybody for helping us with, uh, with this webinar today, and I'll turn it over to you for the introduction. Thanks, Dina. Glad to be part of it. Uh, in addition to my editorial director duties, I'm also an amateur weatherman, and I'd like to tell you that uh, today's pollen count in New York City is 85, which is medium high. Uh, oak, mulberry, and grass are the um, are the problem today. And uh, and uh, while if you suffer from these things, it's a problem. It couldn't be a better time to talk about our subject today. So. Um, uh, as Dina said, Home and Textiles today is uh, is sponsoring this. We're glad to be part of it. We're the publication and uh, media for the home textiles industry. Been doing this a while, and uh, we welcome you to uh, check us out if you're not familiar with us at uh, www.homeandtextilestoday.com. So um, we got a great program today. We, we've done a number of webinars on a variety of subjects, and I always learn things, and I think uh, you will as well. Our uh, speaker today is Dr. John McKeon. Uh, John is the CEO of Allergy Standards Limited, and this is the scientific organization that develops and maintains the international standards that are utilized for the asthma and allergy-friendly certification program. Uh, you'll be happy to know that John is an ER physician and has frequently acted, uh, interacted with allergy sufferers and their families. Um, and uh, he's a fellow of the Royal Coll College of Surgeons in Ireland and also holds his United States medical licensing exam. So he sure knows his medical stuff. I'm not sure if he makes house calls, but he's making a call today, which is on our webinar. So uh, let me introduce John, and John, it's all yours. Take it away. That, that's great, Warren, um, and delighted to be on the webinar as well because uh, Home Textiles today and your various publications have been a great resource to us as we've been researching the industry and, and getting a toehold in the industry. So it's, uh, it's, I'm delighted to be able to kind of pay, pay that back and, and hopefully be a resource for your audience today and talk a little bit about this subject, uh, asthma and allergy. So if I, if I dive straight in, just, just to, to give some context of why our certification program exists, um, what are the issues as it opposes to the American market and also internationally. Um, th this is, this is, a, is a big health issue in America. Um, it, asthma and allergy revolve around the issue of trigger factors. Uh, Warren at the beginning there spoke a lot about outdoor uh, air triggers, um, but the issue is also one very relevant to indoor air quality and what we bring into our homes both in, in, in chemicals, uh, trigger factors, and aerobiology, um, things like dust mites and, and pollen, as you mentioned. And I'll speak to that a little bit later. But just to put this into context, um, 2 million visits to the ER every year is the leading case for uh, child children's visits to the ER. Um, and a, an interesting statistic that maybe some of, of the audience who may be parents with kids with asthma and allergies if you, if you attend an ER with an acute exacerbation of your symptoms, the latest research shows about 50% of those people get treated incorrectly, go home with the wrong medication because it's out of hours and they're not with their own general practitioner. So not only is this a big issue in an acute phase, um, it's also an issue in the chronic or the long-term phase, and, and it's very much um, a public health issue. The trends are all going up. Um, both asthma and allergy. If you look at by numbers, it's 60 million people in America. Um, if you add the next six disease states all together, you still don't have as many people with asthma and allergies in America. If you look at that by household, when you consider a sibling or a child or a parent or a member of that extended family, the dispersed family, um, as a house, um, it's about 70% of, of households are impacted and it's part of their buying decision or, the, or their sentiment as they buy products for that home. 
looked at from a market point of view, you're looking at about 43 billion on allergen control. That's around the same for uh, prescription medicine and over-the-counter medicine with regards to allergen control products. So we're looking at people buying certain types of encasing, certain types of pillows, certain air cleaners, cleaning pro uh, products. Um, the market is around 43 billion. So why do you need a certification program? So I'd like to tell you the story, uh, and it's, it mirrors my experience as an ER physician, about people going, essentially the mums of kids with asthma and allergies, going to a number of sources, wanting to be very proactive, but there being a gap in the information. So if I just bring you through these slides, um, what is the story? Well, we know we spend 80% of our time indoors, uh, the majority of that is actually in the bedroom, uh, obviously where home textiles are, are very key. But when you think about your transport, your office and your home, it's about 80%. And we also know that the EPA says that indoor air pollution, particularly now as we're sealing our buildings and tightening them around sustainability issues and energy efficiency issues, which are all good initiatives, um, but there has been uh, a casualty in that, and that is air quality. Um, if you look at what the National Institute of Health say with regards to managing asthma and allergies, they talk about this concept of reducing the environmental load or reducing the triggers, but that can only be done on a whole of house or a multifaceted approach. So it's not just about getting encasings for your bedding, it's now about your furnace filter, your vacuum cleaners, etc. So we know we spend time indoors and we know we need a multifaceted approach. If you look at what the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute say, um, and this is their guidelines for physicians, um, they talk about two, two things, environmental control um, and patient education. So essentially what the physicians and the healthcare professionals are saying is that we really shouldn't be treating the symptoms of asthma and allergy before we've actually looked at the environment, which is the most common source of triggers um, and is the patient aware of the triggers and is the, does the patient um, have a trigger factor avoidance plan for their home? And only really when that's been completed should you then move into medical management and it should be certainly done in tandem with it. The issue is that that's not as easy as it sounds. So even though mums really get this concept and they want to be proactive and they write the stuff down, to actually have a comprehensive environmental control strategy for your home, you're talking about number of products uh, in every room of the home. For example, furnace filters, laundry, um, textile-based products, home textiles, bedding, mattresses, pillows, but also cleaning products, products that manage air, um, and so on and so forth. So without help to do this, it's actually quite difficult to do on your own. Then if you look at the physician literature, this is a paper from the Journal of Allergy and Clin Clinical Immunology, the doctors themselves have identified that while this market um, for trigger factor avoidance products, source control, um, we're not really doing a good job as a society to help people identify the products we're telling them to go and get. And not only are we not doing a good job out of it. Some people out there are doing a bad job and they're making claims that are not scientifically substantiated. Um, I use this next slide as, as a way just to demonstrate what the confusing allergy labeling is that's out there. This, this is a slide from the UK. Um, it's a carton of eggs and the food allergy labeling is, you know, the product may contain eggs or contains traces of eggs. So um, not only are there misleading claims or vague claims like doctor recommended or allergy proof, there's some out there that, that are just plain wrong. And we need to look at this as an industry more closely. Um, if I go to the next slide, uh, you'll see this is from the US Food and Drug Administration, the US, you know, your own FDA. And we hear this word hypoallergenic used in bedding. Oh, the bedding's hypoallergenic. But if you actually do a bit of digging around the word hypoallergenic, you'll see here that there are no federal standards or any definitions of scientific basis that govern that term hypoallergenic. Essentially, can mean anything that you want it to mean. Um, and it's not substantiated, but it's used. 
So the issue is, is that reputable companies that actually are spending the innovation dollars and the R&D and making better products, they're not on a level playing field because a lower cost competitor can come in and just label it as hypoallergenic, but they haven't gone to all the trouble of, of testing it for chemical irritants, for allergen filtration properties. And we do need to, to look at this because the better companies are actually suffering because other people can use the word unrestricted. There is some good news on the horizon. If you look at another government agency, the Federal Trade Commission, they are now beginning to get more proactive in this area. And you'll see with regards to this, this vacuum cleaner company uh, mentioned claims with regards to allergens, um, but they haven't substantiated it and they actually drifted across into clinical claims and they were fined $750,000. But actually, the, some product had to be recalled and ultimately they put Oric out of business. So. Um, you'll also see the, F, um, the FTC interacting with um, mattress companies. Um, this is around some VOC outgassing, volatile organic compound outgassing and or organic claims. So it's beginning to become more more relevant in, in, our, in, our, in our area. There's a couple of things that are happening. One is this democratization of information and consumers aren't uh, going to going to put up with this anymore. They they can now dig behind claims. They can get on forums. They can get on chat rooms. This is a, a case study of Huggies Pure and Natural. Um, there was nothing pure or natural about the diapers, and a class action was taken out, taken against it. So you can see here. And if I move to the next slide, even the, a recent edition of the Harvard Business Review, the regulatory environment is something that's a really a, a business issue. So there is really, there is this issue coalescing around the issue of um, being told one thing by, by physicians, the indoor air quality being an issue, people being very proactive about trigger factor avoidance, um, but labelings, different things being said by the Federal Trade Commission, by the EPA, by the NHA, NIH, and the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. So if you put yourself in, in, the, in, the, in the shoes now, um, like many of your customers, uh, or retailer guess would be that if your child was diagnosed with asthma or allergies, your perspective, your lens on life, your outlook changes. And um, rather than just looking for pillows and cleaning products, you now have a kind of a theme uh, of how you actually go looking for products with this new lens or this new perspective on. So what are the type of emotions you will go through? Well, as any parent, you want to uh, provide safety for, you, for your children and your loved ones. Um, it's about healing and about nurturing, and I hope it's not it seemed to be too soft, uh, but it boils ultimately down to love and this emotional connection that you that you want to have and that your customers have, and that this is a key issue um, around the diagnosis of asthma and allergy. So what do parents do? Well, like most of us, they go straight to Dr. Google, um, and you'll see here the amount of searches. 140 million searches in 2015, um, and this is from Google Insights, um, showing it the exact keywords of pollen and allergies spiking at the allergy seasons. We're in it now in May. Uh, Warren, at the beginning of, of the webinar, mentioned that. And you'll see it spiking in May, and in October, fall, ragweed season, back to school, closing our doors, turning our heating back on. So people are clearly really engaged in this issue and are seeking answers, and, and they're doing that. The issue is, who can you trust? And if you look at the trust barometer that Edelman do every year about people moving away from the traditional source of trust um, and third-party certification system uh, um, and not-for-profit uh, patient advocacy groups really rating very highly on the Edelman trust barometer. But people also want actionable insights. They don't just want information. You can get information from Google. What you can't get is now I know, what do I do? And that's your actionable insight or your wisdom. And that's where the certification program um, fits into. And we can see this across the industry. Um, one I'm very familiar with, say, in the textile industry, the, the Ecotex mark, the confidence in textiles. The wool mark is, is actually the first registered certification trademark. Um, where people are looking for these, the global organic textile standard, cradle to cradle. You know, these, these are very much part of the consumer sentiment and buying decision when they buy products. 
Um, I was recently speaking at the Living Future conference in Seattle about the built environment. Um, and this was a recurring theme that inv the environment and sustainability and green um, is a key issue and it does overlap with health and wellness and your family. But they're not the same. There's some crossover, but there's not the same. And I believe the, the value um, hierarchy, the decision-making tools that people use and how they stack them, which ranks the highest um, and what impacts on their decision, obviously price will always be there. But I think health and family and wellness is where people are now moving the, the value of decision-making. So that is the story of why we felt that a certification program um, was required for this area. You need, you know, we, we want to be winners, you need a winner, you need an advers adversary, our adversary is asthma and allergy, and this is our vision to create this, um, this uh, trusted certification mark based on science that's uh, user-friendly and to identify products that are more suitable for people and asthma and allergy. It's a very unique certification program because it's actually a joint venture between two organizations, two pillars of the program. Allergy standards as the testing and science, developing the standards, the certification body, and then partnering uniquely with the National Patient Advocacy Group that is uh, the oldest of its kind in America uh, for this, this issue. Um, uh, a very extensive board of directors uh, based down in Washington, D.C and a unique partnership with that, as I said, two pillars, science, but then education coming together with that. So the certification program is designed with kind of three areas in mind. First and foremost, as I've said, to assist consumers at the point of purchase, uh, but to tell those consumers that the products are being tested through science, so to identify them, but then with labeling, with care codes, which I'll speak to a little bit later on in the webinar, that there's very much a proactive lifestyle choice to make with the products. Um, and then also, and that's why I'm delighted to be on this webinar today, to actually help manufacturers um, to be identified if they're making better products. Um, we want to we want to get those labeled and identify that, but also help um, manufacturers improve their products and contribute to the whole concept of um, uh, healthy homes, and also, as I had that slide early on from the Harvard Business Review, to stay ahead of legislation and to make sure they're legislation compliant. And I know a lot of retailers now are looking for the certification mark because they feel it actually validates claims and helps them tell their story um, with regards to allergy claims on products. So this, this is the certification. It's very much on product at the point of purchase, comes with the, the, the care code. And it fits in with that um, experience or that thematic kind of concept shopper who's shopping through the lens of somebody with asthma and allergy. And this is what they're considering as, they, as they're going through the retail environment. It's then backed up, as I mentioned, the key pillar is education. So there's a, a companion website for that. Um, obviously, it will feature on the allergy standards website, which is much more business to business. And we drill into more of the standards. Um, and then we, we try to get the certification off product and into people's hands. So there's a companion app. I have the iTunes version here, but it's available on Android as well. And people can actually diarize their, their products that they've bought, add to favorites. They can scan the barcodes. We have additional QR code initiatives um, on customized outreach, but the QR code will will work across all products. And in fact, it works on products that aren't certified, and people can actually email us in and, and get information or ask us to contact manufacturers. So we're very much engaged on product through labeling, but off product on the web, and obviously then through mobile. So what we're, what we're trying to do, and what we think we're offering, is, is this concept of the values hierarchy of the decision-making stack when people buy products. And I think now, we, 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 we've, we've come from an area which is old words like hypoallergenic, the, you know, eco and green, which really don't quite address the issue of asthma and allergy, and then the confusing claims. And what we want to try and do is get everybody up this value curve and get them into this new paradigm without using too many cl cliches of blue ocean, that is repositioning your businesses to appeal to health and wellness. 
um, and do it with good products that are comfortable, they're not sweaty, they've got good water vapor transmission, good airflow, but they're around healthy homes and they don't outgas volatile organic compounds or they don't have harmful textile, uh, harmful chemicals on the textile. So that's really what, what we're trying to do. So if I just go uh, briefly into some of the testing and some of the science, um, it all starts with the standards. Um, we de decide to target various categories depending on generally the amount of inquiries we get into the, the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America's website. Um, for example, we're, we're, we're looking at uh, dishwashers at the moment because we're getting a lot of questions from the food allergy community about adequately rinsing um, their products. Um, but bedding was one of the first standards we went to because it's a key area, home textiles in the bedroom, traditionally associated with dust mite allergies. Um, but a lot of other issues that we all know get into the textile industry to improve textile performance, uh, formaldehyde on easy iron shirts and things like that. So we, we choose a, a, ta a category. We then will do a literature review and um, what, what are the guidelines of the National Institute of Health, um, of the various um, National Heart, Lung and Blood Institutes, uh, the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology, uh, and then we will also consult with industry as well. And we will boil those down and cull the literature down into product attributes uh, and criteria, then develop um, processes and protocols to develop those standards. In America, essentially, one of the key ingredients of what we do is we, all our standards are peer reviewed by the Medical Review Board of the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America. That's a physician review board. Um, so when we set guidelines, we can't uh, arbitrarily set them. The physician review process will look for why have we chosen those meaningful standards. Ultimately, after that peer, peer review process is completed, the standards then published uh, on the ASL website, and then we will start to um, test products and clients who submit um, products to the laboratory against the requirements of the standard. To break it down, because we know we don't have that long today, and I'm more than happy Dina will be following up with you directly um, to have follow-on conversations with anybody. But to, to break down the standard in its essential format, it breaks into three pillars. The, the chemical attributes of the products, the physical attributes, and then the allergen attributes. The chemical um, would be quite similar to the Ecotex certification. Um, we're looking at the chemical constituents. We're looking at harmful... Um, irritants, allergenic dye stuffs, azo dyes, residual pesticides. Um, we do look at outgassing of, of VOCs and an emission chamber study, so it's milligrams of VOCs per meter cubed, not just bulk analysis. But essentially what we want to do is examine the product for its chemical content, that it's, that it's a, a low risk as possible. We will then do physical um, examination of the product. And essentially there what you're looking at, can it be washed, for example, at a high temperature without degradation of the product? Um, we're looking at comfort physiology, so it's wickability. Uh, compliance is a big issue with asthma and allergy. Um, and if products are uncomfortable, if they're sweaty, if they're noisy, we know people just won't use them. So we want, we want to make sure these products are best in class as well. Um, and, that, and that's assessed through the, its physical attributes, crocking and, and tear strength and things like that, pre and post wash. The third phase then is looking at the um, its impact on allergen control. So essentially, what we're doing there is active testing, where we're 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 driving allergens through the fabrics and looking at its filtration, what gets into the breathing zone. But then also do passive uh, climate control studies, and I'll show you some photographs of those chambers on the next slide. But we'll look at the product up for 12 weeks um, in environmental chambers and look at the um, passive allergen infestation and hosting opportunity, whether it's pollen, um, dust mite allergens, uh, cat allergens. We generally use a range of allergens because they're different sizes, they're different shapes, they've got different kinetics, they, 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 they go through filters in different ways. So we, we will assess the product um, with regards to its allergen trapping and filtration ability. So here is some photographs of the laboratory you'll see on the, the bottom uh, the bottom two here. This is an example of representative samples actually arriving into the laboratory. 
Um, these are the chambers for the passive allergen studies that I mentioned there that actually incubated up to these and we look at the um, time and motion study um, using vacuum sampling of the pillows and they're put onto these various shelvings with very high background levels of asthma and allergies and you'll see one of the technicians actually placing up petri dishes here of allergen challenges um, and this is another study here called the, the um, dust mite filtration study um, and that's been conducted in, in a fume hood there. So there's a number of different um, type of tests we do as there's multifaceted <clears throat> and it's whole of product testing. It's not just the chemical, it's not just the physical, it's not just the allergen. The product must pass all aspects of the evaluation criteria to be, to be certified. If I just uh, drill in onto the, um, the slide here a little bit further, um, we can look at the um, next study. Let me just bring my cursor back onto my screen here. Excuse me one second. This is the modified dust trap study. Um, and here we've actually just taken a sample of the fabric and um, there's an allergen challenge above it. We're driving air um, through it um, and monitoring what gets transmitted through the fabric. That's your, it's a very standard allergy filtration test. You actually can, can get those in a number of labs and we, you'll often see clients who, who, who've got that test. Um, but what they're not looking at is, well, what are the other attributes of the product? Uh, what about when I take that um, ticking fabric and I make it into a pillow and then I wash it, is that filtration study maintained before and after? Um, the, ne the next study um, on the right with this, the, the roller there is the simulation use test and that's a slight variation of the airflow test but we're using ball bearings um, to actually um, rock over 24 hours and see what allergen gets transmitted there. So that's just a, a couple of the allergen tests I just wanted to just focus in on for today. So let's let's look at the program in action. Well, I showed you that slide at the beginning with the whole picture of the house, um, and we've we've pretty much got at least one, if not two, products in every room of the house. Last year was the tenth year anniversary of the certification program. It, it's been slow to build up to where we are, um, but I think we've had a real breakthrough in the last two years particularly with big clients like Procter & Gamble, like 3M, um, and particularly a, a number of bedding clients have joined very recently. Um, Holland, though, were first in the program, joined by Downlight, now joined by Wellspun, by Nishat, so a number of, a number of bedding. Uh, Royal Heritage, which is a national allergy brand as well, at, um, and AQ Textiles. So there's a number of, of bedding uh, clients in the program now. Smart Silk you're seeing there as well. Um, so this, this is just some screenshots, this is literally me with my iPhone, uh, the last time I was in at Macy's. Um, these are the Ralph Lauren uh, products, you'll see them here uh, certified as asthma and allergy friendly here on, on the, on the labelling. You'll also see the certification symbol on the product, there's, all, there's the American mark there but there's also the Canadian mark because we, we do run a program in Canada and we also run a program internationally as well. Um, so they're the Ralph Lauren products. Um, I did mention earlier, uh, this, I think it's the Spanish translation here, but products coming with a care code. So it's not just a label like hypoallergenic and that's the end of it. Yes, it was tested and certified in our laboratory, but as I mentioned in the chambers, we, 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 we do a, a proxy of a field study and look at how the, the pillow needs to be looked after and washed up to about 12 weeks and it's essential all our products whether it's a, a vacuum cleaner whether it's a furnace filter or it's cleaning products they all come with care codes on how you maintain the product in the low allergen state and um, this is you may recognize uh, Beth Mack just in the corner there Beth Mack from Hollander this is Hollander's showroom um, with some of their signage in their showroom with regard to the certified product and um, this is a press release that obviously in, in um, a, 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 a publication I'm sure you're all very familiar with uh, about the fact that they launched their first certified uh, down natural fill. We do have a certification program for natural fill products as well that are, that are um, treated and washed and managed in a certain way. Um, one of our recent announcements I, uh, was with Wellspun. This is the CEO of Wellspun, Dupali, signing actually our contract. They uh, made an announcement there in the showroom at last market week. Um, and they really um, have embraced this issue that I had earlier about health and wellness being being key. Um, Deepak Chopra 
uh, spoke at their showroom with regards to the alliance they formed with Delos and the Whale Building Program, and they also featured the certified asthma and allergy friendly. So they've really moved on this health issue, and they should be congratulated for being kind of ambassadors and leading the way in, in that. Um, this is another one of our clients. This will be Downlight to do the Martha Stewart line. Again, the Dream Science by Martha Stewart. You'll see the certification mark on the front, and then you'll see mentioned again the care code and the, the, the pillow being certified asthma and allergy friendly here. So, um, there are just a couple of photographs that that, that, I, that I took in Macy's the last time I was there. Just to give you another example, in industry, these are end caps. I believe in 800 of the Home Depots across America. This is a, a building material product. It's a, a mineral wool product. Um, and again, I wanted to put that slide up just to show you the mark working at the point of, of retail, being able to scan those barcodes and those QR codes, and it being a whole of house program and moving beyond textiles. Um, I mentioned earlier on with regards to the two pillars and Patient education, engagement is very important. There's a screen grab of, of the app um, and our Facebook page, and we have a lot of user-generated content, a lot of forums, people sharing tips and tricks about, about the, the bedroom. Um, and uh, this is a mall walk event that we organized in Philadelphia recently, where we, we actually took over a whole ground floor of a shopping mall there, profiled all our certified products. And we actually can see in the top right hand corner here, myself and Michelle, who's the account manager for the program, were awarded a congressional citation on the anniversary, the 10th year anniversary of, of the program. So this is a very good example of a community outreach event we do um, along the lines of, of education. Um, this is some work we've done with, with uh, LG, um, the low allergen bedroom, uh, pillows and blankets with regards to the allergy laundry cycle. Again, very, I think very key to a lot of the people on, on the webinar. Um, and because we have the association with the National Patient Organization, we do get asked to do a lot of media work. This is a, a section on Good Morning America, talking about how to get a good night's sleep and the importance of the pillow. And they did a, a particular profile on the cert certified bedding. Um, it, it's also, we are a certification, but we also get reviewed by other certification organizations. You call Consumer Reports so a review body. And here you'll see this is in the paint industry but reviewing what to look for when buying paints, for example. Um, and we're here profiled as number one as regards to Green Seal, Green Guard, Green Shore, and others. So again, it's nice to be reviewed by the reviewers. I mentioned a number of times about patient education and engagement. We do have a number of physician ambassadors. Uh, Dr. Clifford Bassett is a... Um, is a key opinion leader. He's a new book out. Uh, he's one of our ambassadors. He spoke at a recent uh, client council event we had in Washington D.C. And we feel this is very is very important. The credibility, science is is good, but education and credibility is that second pillar of the certification program. Um, this is some of our own research that that we've conducted. Um, I, I've kind of made the point a number of times about health and wellness indoor air qualities. So we do a lot of uh, sentiment analysis, um, trying to figure out what is this issue relevant. And a lot of our, our data suggests it's not only relevant, but it's increasing all the time. Um, and we survey uh, through Nielsen and Harris Interactive what people's attitudinal and awareness data is around the product um, and what they think not only of products that have carried the certification mark, what do they think of companies and what do they think of retailers um, that carry the certification mark? So uh, just coming up over the half hour, and I don't know Dina and Warren would like to leave some time for questions. So I'm just going to uh, just finish up now in a couple of slides. Just to say, I hope I've, I've, I've given you a good overview of, the, of, of asthma and allergy and how, what an issue it is. Um, and how it impacts on buying habits and, and sentiment of, of U.S. consumers. I hope I've given you a sense that the certification is based on science, but it is a whole of product testing, looking at all the attributes and performance criteria, suitability of textile-based products, looking at chemical, physical, and allergen. And then following on from, from peer-reviewed sound science, we follow that through with targeted educational-based awareness 
liaising with our national pa uh, our partners who are in the National Patient Advocacy Group, and that's tied to this this, this message that it's it's lifestyle management, it's it's thematic, it's not marketing to silos, it's marketing through experiential um, uh, lens of the world of the world, and that that is a multifaceted approach to the product. Um, also, as I said, that the, it's whole of product testing and the various things that go into that product. So we are also able to work with uh, upstream in the supply chain and work directly with people who make the ticking fabric and people who supply the feather and down and people who supply embroidery threads and look at component certification um, to help the innovation journey and help people who are converters or the, the cut and sew people who make the product that they can then actually have a relationship through us with uh, component certification as well. And that, that gives that concept of it being whole of product and a multifaceted approach to testing. So i just finish up on this slide. Uh, we have a, a, an office in, I'm based in where the laboratory and the, the standards organization is in Dublin, in Europe, in Ireland. Um, uh, but we do have an office in New York, literally just a few blocks up from the textile building uh, on Park Avenue. And Courtney, who is on the webinar today, um, uh, is in there, so it just makes better sense to follow up with Courtney directly for time zones, etc. Um, and we have a number of position papers. Uh, we, we publish a lot both in peer review journals and uh, we most recently uh, published a lot of content in USA Today. So we've got a lot of material, a lot of content, a lot of free resources and feel uh, free to contact Courtney um, if you'd like any further educational material around the issues of asthma allergy and how they particularly relate to home textiles. Um, and home furnishings in general. So with that, uh, Warren, I'll finish there. Wonderful. So I will take it from here, John. Um, thank you very much. Very well done. We do have a couple uh, of questions, and folks, please do go ahead. Feel free to, to send your questions along. And yes, absolutely, I promise uh, in the follow-up email that I send you, you will get a copy of this presentation. Uh, I will also introduce you uh, via that email to, to, of course, both John and Courtney, so you'll have everybody's uh, email as we as we go forward with that. John, um, you, you did talk about this, but let's just real quick hit on it again because we have some uh, folks talking about it. So in the, a lot of people, of course, in the home and textiles, uh, home textiles world, it, they're familiar already with the Ocotex certification, which is a modular approach, as you talked about. It could be everything, all elements along the supply chain in terms of the components themselves being certified. Can you just talk about that one more time in terms of how you guys deal with that yourselves? Sure. Um, well, we, we work closely, as you know, we, we, with, with Ben and his team in Hohenstein in the US um, and also Testex in, in Zurich. Um, so we, we know them well. We've co collaborated with them on a, on a number of, of items. Um, and we understand how the textile industry works and we understand that component certification pre-approval along the supply chain is, is essential for sourcing. Um, we do it quite a lot in the textile, uh, sorry, in the toy industry uh, where some of our toy clients m like to build up a portfolio of fabrics and fillings and plastic eyes and zippers or embroidery threads that they can call upon that portfolio if they need to configure a particular design item for a particular retailer and they don't need to go back to ground zero on chemical testing as long as you have adequate conformity and quality control and audit. Um, so so we're, we're geared up from that. We, we, we think it's an essential part to scale our business, to get industry friendly, um, and we're, we're quite happy to work with people in the supply chain. Um, and also if they have pre-existing relationships with Ecotex, with Hohenstein, with Testex, that will really enable us to aggregate some of the data. Because a lot of, lot of the chemical tests are actually transferable. We do have slight variations on some formaldehyde emission levels. Um, I think we, we use a, a Japanese standard, for example, which is slightly, slightly different on some of them. But the, there is an enormous amount of crossover there. And, and that really would, would give somebody a real foot up into the program if they have a relationship with the Ecotex 
certification. Great, so that's something they should raise as they go through this process with you. John, I have um, various versions of the same uh, question, so I'm just going to ask it once as opposed to four or five times. Uh, can you, there are two, two pieces that we always get asked, but can you talk, generally speaking, about the amount of time it takes for certification? And I know this is going to be difficult, but are you able to address cost in any way? Sure, yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy to address both. Um, generally, we would tell people about 12 weeks um, for a certification turnaround time. Um, now, that sounds long, but we know there's always issues with shipping products, and we're, we're, we're dealing with live biological samples. So we build in quite a lot of, of spare time in that, because we don't want to run up against um, deadlines like the Lunar New Year, or people need you know, stuff to be on the water, to be shipped, to hit a distribution center for, for Macy's by a certain date or whatever it may be. So we will tell people to at least start your application um, in advance of that, and we need 12, 12 weeks upon receipt of the samples. And certainly let us know if there's a particular media event or a trade show or a launch that you're going for as you apply for certification. Uh, but 12, 12 weeks as a guide is what people need to use for time. Um, on on testing, generally we build up a testing project. It, it's quite hard to quote for, for for just one pillow, for example. But 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 I'm happy to do that. I'll give you the, the estimate for pillow is about twelve to fifteen thousand dollars for testing. Um, generally, when people submit bedding products, they will be looking at a portfolio of products, various sizes, various SKUs, slight variations of those SKUs. The ticking fabric may be something that's also included in the pillow encasing with a zipper or a comforter or something else, a mattress topper. So when people apply, we build up a, a project and we uh, are able to transfer some of the test data across to that ticking fabric that may be used in another product. So it isn't twelve to $15,000 for every single product that you put in. But if you were to say, look, John, I just want to send you one pillow uh, I don't want any other product, I just want to send that and get that tested for certification criteria. That would be about $12,000. Okay, I think that gives everybody a good generic idea, John, but also please folks, um, you all have John's uh, email, you can ask more targeted uh, questions regarding cost uh, specifically to him. John, are the allergen tests standard test methods published and available publicly? Um, they they're not because they they haven't been standardised say by ISO or A2LA or ASTM. There are they are published. Um, so for example, on the, the the modified dust trap is by an original paper by an immunologist called Thomas Platt, Platts Mills, and I can send people the reference to that. And there are some labs that that will do that. Um, to combine them in the way that we do them. Um, the, there are there are, there's no international standards to that, and certainly the passive allergen studies um, are we design those. So we have published papers on them, um, but there's no actual international standards to them. So it would be very difficult uh, for another laboratory that doesn't have the setup to re to recreate those. But the the way we do them, uh, we have we have journals that we've published it in, so people can certainly look at some of the methodologies. Okay, good. Um, and I have various forms of this question, so folks just bear with me, and if I don't cover exactly what you want, um, send me another note. John, generally speaking, a lot of people are interested in what retailers are doing to help educate the consumer. You did talk about this, but you might want to just go back and help the folks on the in the audience understand sort of the pull-through that is happening today at retail. I think this is mostly, we're talking about U.S. here, John, if you can be um, specifically uh, discussing the retailers here. Sure, sure. Um, first, firstly, um, the retailers have, have really put this program under the microscope. So to be in Bed Bath & Beyond, to be in Macy's, to be in Target, um, we, we've had to be evaluated by, I'm sure your audience knows, you, know, you don't get placement um, unless the science stands up to scrutiny. So that's the first thing I'd say, that we, we have had meetings with all those various people in the big retailers um, and for them to stock 
the product carrying the certification mark, they've evaluated and are satisfied with the science. So that that's the first thing that they've taken it seriously. Um, and the same for the for the the e-commerce site, same for home shopping network, um, and so forth. Our, our, our standards and the test reports um, have been reviewed by these people. So that that was a big hurdle um, to get in. So they, they they know about it and they and they take it seriously and they're, they're very welcoming of it. And a number of them have actually now spec'd it, and it's the price of entry into that category because they. they feel it helps them as a retailer to, to, to make certifications and show that the, the product has been tested by a third party objective uh, criteria. So that's the first point I'll make. Um, and then we, uh, we if, if you go into Bed Bath & Beyond, for example, that the stock a number of our products from the Dyson vacuum cleaners, the Dyson air cleaners, um, Jeff Tauber's products from National Allergy uh, are there. Um, Boner, a cleaning product company, obviously Swiffer, Procter & Gamble, um, they have done lots of educational outreach. Um, Bed Bath Beyond um, did a kind of a let's bring back the traditional spring clean that featured Dyson and Boner um, and did some educational content and outreach about that. Um, we have in-store signage, as you're saying. We have the barcode um, that actually engages people at the point of purchase. And we're doing more and more, particularly on on the on the online, because it's so easy. Um, you can tag products, and you know, sh shoppers that bought this were also interested in this, and you can start to to build content and microsites around that. We did a very effective microsite with the Home Depot um, and LG. Um, Owens Corning have done a lot with with um, with retail as well. Um, and retailers, I think, like it because it, it, it's content heavy um, and it's interesting content that, pe that people are engaged with um, and it gives them something to put on newsletters, something to put on, on websites. So we, we're doing a lot with, with, with various um, retailers. We've done some webinars with store managers um, to tell them about why a product is certified um, and ask questions. I think I had... Um, if I pop back a couple of slides on the on the presentation to the LG, this is uh, the button we call them badges in Europe. I think you call them budget uh, uh, buttons in the US. But this was a button that the store people would actually wear, um, saying, "I'm certified as an allergy friendly." Ask me about about this product and why it's certified. So, at the point of purchase, assisted sales. I know a lot of bedding products are actually assisted sale, and the role of the shop assistant is important. Um, so we, we do we do various um, outreach both online and in store with a number of retailers. Okay, great, thanks, John. Um, as you might imagine, we have uh, a good deal of folks here from the home textiles uh, category, and there is uh, some conversation going on here about dust mites, bed bugs, and what all exactly your certification covers and I, I think this is meant in terms of if we were to promote the certification on our packaging what are we allowed to say how far can we go can we cover things like dust mites beds but tell, tell us what we can we can cover I hope I've captured that question properly if not please let me know <laughs> no no you have uh, you're, absolutely, you're absolutely right um, because we, we really ask people to, to drive the data and the science. That, is, as I said, that's the two key pillars of the program. And we want the, the, the conversation to be around the science. Um, in A.J. Laffey's book from P&G, he says that you want to play the game where you can win. Um, and our clients can win the game around science. And we don't believe um, competitors who haven't invested in science would win that conversation, and particularly with um, as I mentioned earlier, the democratization of information and the engagement of consumers and, and chat rooms and forums, um, people will call you out very quickly if you're not substantiated by science. So we really encourage our, our clients to uh, publish the, the data on their website. Uh, you, each product comes with a, a certificate of certification, not dissimilar to the Ecotex program where you can uh, look that up online and check it's valid and check what does it actually mean. If it's a vacuum cleaner that's certified, what's its allergen pickup level, uh, what's its allergen filtration level, 
uh, what's its, its, its filtration capacity, at, at bin capacity, and so forth. So those, that data is there, and we encourage people in whatever medium they can to communicate that. Generally, when we're looking at, at allergens and specific claims around allergens, we have thresholds that they're referenced in the standard, and they speak to three allergens mainly. Um, dust mite allergen, because it's generally the largest and generally stays on surfaces and is more relevant to textile-based products. Cat allergen, because it's the smallest and generally stays airborne and is more relevant um, to air filtration products. And then Timothy grass, which we use as a pollen, um, is somewhere in between, so it's, it's, a good, it's a good cover for those. So those claims with regards to specific uh, allergens that have been tested, we'd be very, we would encourage people to, to use those. We don't uh, cover bed bugs uh, because bed bugs aren't actually associated with, with asthma and allergies. They're very unpleasant, very uncomfortable, nobody wants them, but they don't currently fit under the criteria of the certification standard. Now, as it happens, the laboratory we use is a laboratory called Airmid Health Group. Uh, they actually do standalone bed bug testing, and they're, they're open for business to do that. Should should you want that particular claim, but that that claim around bed bugs wouldn't fall under the asthma and allergy friendly program, but certainly dust mites would. Okay, great. And John, I did I did get a follow up note. Um, on this, I, I asked the question wrong, but thank you for for answering it so completely. Um, what, what is included on the on the label itself? What can, I don't know if you have a picture of the label, but you you don't say, for instance, la dust mites aren't listed on the label. It's it, there we go. Maybe you can just if it's possible. Well, we can we can read it off to them, John, if you're able. Sure, sure, and I and I we can I can give you an example of it, but it okay. it would say that this this the product is has been proven to control common household allergens. Um, Generally, we on bedding we, we we may not include dust mites because the the two, the two issues there. One is if you speak to dust mites themselves, you are now actually uh, describing yourself as a pesticide or a pesticide uh, con or control device. So that actually then falls under the EPA. So you need to be careful when you talk about dust mite and dust mite control because you're now actually um, you're talking about the animal as in the dust mite and therefore it's a pesticide. So you always need to be very careful to talk about dust mite allergen which is just a protein or an aero allergen and therefore you're not being a pesticide. So that is just, just a free tip for your audience that in any dust mite claims or dust mite allergy related claims don't say that you control dust mites unless you actually are a registered pesticide with the EPA. Um, so that, that's one thing. Uh, and also I, I think, now pe people, it's their own labeling, pe people can do, do what, they, what they want with their own products, but with regards to our advice, now we've done product launches with Dyson, uh, with P&G, with LG, we've done a lot of research around the consumer persona, who we describe as the health maven. Um, and they're generally mums, generally head of households, and there, there, there is a very clear persona of the engaged person around um, indoor air quality and health issues. And on the whole, while they're tuned in to the issue of asthma and allergies, they don't want to be tuned in too much into disease and dust mites and kind of focusing on negatives. We, we try to say, look, the product has, is, is at such quality, it, it's even certified by the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America. And very much keep the certification program focused on health, on wellness, on indoor air quality, on cleanliness, on low toxicity and we don't really recommend people to drill in too much into scary pictures of dust mites with no entry signs. I think that's kind of a slightly dated approach to the whole allergy issue um, and we like to focus it a lot more on health and wellness. Great, good. I think that's a perfect answer um, for this. Folks, I have just one more question on my list here so if you have, you have more please do go ahead and send them in. We have a few minutes left here. Um, John, you talked about a couple of different laboratories, uh, and you mentioned Hohenstein, uh, and you mentioned Testex. Does that mean that, that pe the folks here on the uh, webinar can send their products to these labs, or is this a separate um, process by which they have to send it through you? Um, we, we, we would need to control, as a certification body, we, we need to control the application. So it needs to start with us. Um, 
And then there are certain laboratories that, that we have worked with. We've worked with FGS in Shenzhen and in Hong Kong, worked with Bureau Veritas in Germany, uh, that can test to standards that are textile-based. Um, and they are, as, as per your question earlier on, are they uh, recognize international standards for crocking, for seam strength, for um, distortion after washing, for grayscale index. So there are aspects of, of that, that that we we are happy for people applying for certification can get that information as long as we're informed uh, through designated accredited ISO UCAS type accredited laboratories for certain physical testing, Air, airflow for example, water vapor, wickability testing. Um, and we can aggregate the data in association if they have existing partner laboratories. The other kind of batch of testing, let's just call it the, the, the kind of the medical or the health-based type testing, which relates to aerobiology, aeroallergen, air, air filtration. They, they are studies that we have a unique capability to in our partner laboratory here in Dublin called AirMid Health Group, which I mentioned. Um, so that, that particular testing needs to be done in this laboratory, but other, other physical attribute testing, as long as it's done as part of our project, we're happy for clients to get it with their existing network. Okay, good. And I think maybe the best way to end this is to show uh, Courtney's uh, contact information again, John, if you don't mind just leaving that there, because ultimately Courtney uh, is going to be the best person for folks to start with um, here in the States. I mean, of course, everyone's going to have John's email as we uh, finish up this webinar. But John, thank you very much. That is the, the last question, unless there's any last minute ones that I don't see coming in so good. Let's, let's go ahead and thank John. Uh, well done. Very, very, very informative. Thank you so much. And I want to, again, thank uh, Warren and the folks at h and &T, Great job. Thank you for sponsoring this and putting this on for the, for the folks in the industry. Um, John, uh, we appreciate your time, and thanks very much. Delighted to have the opportunity. Thank you, Dina, and thank you, Warren.